Welcome to the Cold War Prepper. My name is Lee, and today I'd like to talk about six and a half ways to brew your coffee in a post-SHTF environment. So the first way, of course, is one of the oldest, and that's the way the cowboys did it. They had a pot, they boiled some water, they took a handful of beans that they had ground, probably with a, a mortar and pestle or with a hammer or something like that. They ground them that way, uh, roast them, and then they threw them into the pot and just let them steep. Uh, as they boiled that, the, their concoction for their coffee. And that's how the coffee, the original coffee pot kind of appeared. Uh, they would pour it through the spout, and sometimes they would use their kerchief or some other form of cotton as a filter to try to filter out the grounds before they poured it into the cup. Um, so that was the first way, was just basically what we might call cowboy coffee, throwing the ground coffee, ground roasted coffee into a pot of boiling water and then hopefully filtering it as it gets poured into your drinking device. Second way is what I call soldier's coffee. Uh, so as early as World War I, what soldiers would do is they'd take the ground coffee and then either tie it inside a kerchief and then tie a knot around the kerchief, or the more common way was to use a clean sock. And they would pour all the, the coffee grounds into either one of those two and then put it down inside a pot of boiling water so that it would seep through and hopefully the uh, either the kerchief or the socks we contain the vast majority of the coffee grounds, and uh, so you'd have a pot of coffee without the grounds. Then the French came along with a unique concept, and they called it the French press. So uh, I actually have, I, I only thought I had two, but when I was going through this last night in a rehearsal with my wife, uh, she reminded me we have a third one. So this is a French press cup. And um, what you see here is you've got the vessel for the water, and then you've got this contraption here uh, that goes down on top of it. So you kind of like the cowboy coffee or the, or the soldier's coffee. You're going to pour boiling water into this device. Um, and what you want to do is put in one and a half tablespoons of ground coffee for every four ounces of coffee. So this is a 16 ounce uh, carafe, so that's going to be right at six tablespoons of coffee. You're going to pour in there, and then you put this lid on top. Now the lid has an expansion device here, it's a spring, and then it has a silicone gasket here, so that it's basically water and airtight as it goes down. But then it has a filter in the bottom, so that as you're pushing the grounds down, the coffee the brewed coffee seeps up into it. Um, so the way that it's typically done is you put your boiling water in. After you put your boiling water in, you let your coffee seep for about four minutes. Uh, then the way the French do it is they take this plunger and they plunge it down. It's going to take quite a while because you're pushing all that uh, coffee into the upper chamber. And then once you've done that, all your grounds are contained in the bottom. And you can pour the coffee out without that much uh, grounds getting into your coffee. I don't do it that way myself. Uh, once I get down, once I've done my four minutes, I'm going to push the plunger down just a little bit below the surface of the spout. And then I'm going to start pouring. And as I'm pouring, I'm going to start plunging a little bit. So uh, no big major difference, except that you know it takes a long time to get the plunger down. Uh, if you're going to do it that way. And it takes almost the same amount of time, I guess, to pour it uh, if you don't do the plunger. But, you know, that's just the way I do it. Um, I do have two others. So this is my camp version of that. So this is the one I take camping, uh, Stanley. And so it's got a little plastic nestle inside here. So you're going to put your boiling water inside here. This is a double wall uh, vacuum uh, coffee container. Once you put your, your coffee and your, your grounds and your boiling water inside here, then this is your plunger and it's going to go in. You're going to do the same thing. This one, however, you do have to plunge because you're going to get it down inside. Then you have the coffee here, the, or the sealer at the top. And now you have a vacuum thermos full of processed coffee. Uh, the third one that she reminded me we had, it was in a totally different area. It was up top in our in our in our kitchen pantry, and that's this one we got from Starbucks. So this is a plastic double wall. You can't boil uh, or anything in this cup. Uh, so you're just going to put the boiling water in here. Of course, it's got the same contraption at the bottom. You push that down, affix the top, push it down, and then you've got once again a container to keep your coffee warm uh, for quite a while. So that's the French press method. Uh, the next method after that was the percolator. 
And this is what I grew up with. This is what mom always had on the stove in our house. Um, so with a percolator, what you're going to do is you're just going to put cold water inside of the pot. And then you're going to put this stand in there. Now this stand has a concave bottom. So as the water boils, it basically gets forced up this tube. And then it's going to bounce off of this uh, clear dome here. And then it's going to dissipate over the top of the basket. Now the basket has a removable top. And inside you're going to put one tablespoon of coffee for every uh, four ounces of water. And notice that it has the little holes in the bottom so that as the coffee uh, pours over and seeps through, I'm sorry, as the water pours over and seeps through the coffee, it drains down inside the pot. So it's getting reheated and comes back up. But this is going to keep that from uh, your grounds all in one nice neat location. The nice thing about this is you can tell the strength of the coffee by the color of the coffee as it hits the percolator top. So that's the percolator method. This later became the electric coffee pot and then various uh, forms after that. If you have the 32 cup stand pot, like we always had in, in our tent in the army in our operations tent, uh, that is the same uh, idea. It's a percolator, so it's gonna come up to the top and then it's got a big basket. You're gonna have all your grounds in and uh, that becomes a percolator, but it's a 32 cup percolator. So for large groups, it's a good idea. After that, we began the pour-over method. So the coffee pot, the electric coffee pot we have now, is a pour-over coffee pot. And uh, so I think that's probably the most common right now. And it uses a number four cone. And I told you I was buying, uh, in my last video, I told you I was going to buy uh, some number two cones. And there's a reason behind that. And I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, this is Stanley's uh, pour-over. Oh, no, this is... This is my camp, I forgot, this is my camp version of the French press. So this is the one that uh, goes out and, and you can actually put directly on a fire. It's not double steel wall. It, this one you can put on the fire, boil the water, and then it's got the French press inside of it so that uh, you can push that down. Uh, but that's another French press. Where's my pour over? Oh, there's my pour over. Okay, so here's my pour over pot. So originally it was nothing more than a pot. And uh, so you've got your pot of water. Now, the thing is, you cannot, you can uh, boil your water in this pot. It looks kind of like a percolator, but it's not. It's just a, an empty vessel. Uh, but you're going to have to pour your water into something else in order to pour it into uh, the top of your pour over. So here, what you're going to do is you're going to put your grounds down in the bottom. Once again, one tablespoon for every four ounces of water. Once you've got your um, grounds in there, you're going to use this. This is kind of a top. Uh, just keep it all in place. So you're going to stuff that down inside and it looks like this when it's done. So now all the grounds are in between those two layers of filtered uh, metal filters, if you will. And uh, that sits on top. Now you're going to take that boiling water and just pour it in. So the amount of water in this is equal to the amount of water that's going to be in here uh, or brewed coffee. So it's just going to go through once. You pour it through, it seeps through, drips down, and so you have uh, regular coffee down at the bottom. Once it's all dripped through, then you take the lid and you have a pot of coffee you can keep warm. So that's the first of the pour-over methods. The more common, especially among campers um, and, and hikers and everything else for pour-overs, uh, you've got the cup pour-over. So where's my coffee cup? Oh, I can't believe it's not here on the table with me. Uh, but anyhow, this fits over your coffee pot, uh, over your coffee cup here. And so it's going to sit on top of your coffee cup. Inside the top, you can use a number two. That's the reason I bought the number two cones. Uh, cone, fold it up and put it inside. And now you're going to put in one and a half tablespoons of coffee into that cone. And then pour one cup's worth of hot water, uh, hopefully boiling water or seeping water. And it's going to seep through and make you one cup of coffee. Uh, once that's done, you can take the filter out, dispose of it. When it gets really bad and you've run out of filters, there are there is a filtration system here at the bottom that's going to keep the majority of those grounds out of your drinking coffee. So it's got the uh, the mesh here, but it's got the plastic mesh up on top. And but the disadvantage of that is you have to wash this after after every use. So this is uh, my collapsible version for my camping, and uh, so that's the pour over method. So so far we've talked about. Uh, the cowboy method, the army method, the percolator, the pour over, and the drip. So what is method number six? Well, you aren't going to believe this. 
but GSI uh, makes a small espresso machine. So this is the espresso machine. You can take the top off, uh, put your water in the bottom, then it's got the same kind of contraption as far as the percolator where it's going to take the steam and put the steam up through. You're going to pack your grounds in here, then you're going to, then this has another filter on the top of it. So you're going to force steam through the coffee and then that steam goes up through the spigot up top and then it condenses into coffee that drips down into your cup. So this is the strongest of all the coffee makers. This is the espresso machine. You need extremely finely ground coffee in order to make espresso. Uh, but this is the sixth way you can do it. So all of these methods can use an open fire, open flame in the outdoors. Uh, but of course, if you're using instant coffee, you don't need any of them. So this is Lee, the Cold, uh, the Cold War Prepper. And I just want to give you six ideas on how you can brew coffee in the future after P uh, SHTF. I'll put the links to some of those down below at my Amazon store. You all take care. Have a safe day. And remember, we're all in this together so we can come out of it together. Bye-bye.